All right, so return of the cruiserweights. It's our next topic here. Unreal cruiserweight classic we had uh, earlier this year, which was won by TJ Perkins. That that tournament was freaking amazing. They had it um, on the network. Yeah, they have a, uh, a United Kingdom one coming up in January, which is going to be sick too. Uh, I don't know any of the wrestlers in it though. <laughs> no, I have either. zero clue. <laughs> um, so it should be interesting. I don't know anyone going into it, so it's just going to be interesting to and see from it. From that Cruiserweight Classic, it started like a Cruiserweight like revolution, rebellion on Twitter. Like everyone yeah. wanted the Cruiserweights to come back. Yeah. They had they, they ended up signing some guys that – not all of them, but some of the guys that were in that uh, Classic they, at WWE actually yeah. signed them. We had the return of the Brian Kendrick. Uh, TJ Perkins, who if you guys don't know, back in TNA, he used to be Suicide. Um, we also had uh, – Zack Sabre Jr. in the tournament, Grand Matalik, Rishwan, uh, uh, Cedric Alexander, which is my boy. Uh, just to name a few, man, the Cruiserweight Classic was huge and it was unreal. What an awesome tournament. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it, guys. I don't know why you haven't seen it yet. But TJ Perkins won it and became the new Cruiserweight champion. Um, and it was announced that they were going over to Raw. Yeah, and it eventually slowed down, just like the the whole women's, women's revolution this year. It, just, it they, slowed down they got, a little bit. They, they made it. They turned it into Raw garbage. That's what yeah, they did. They turned yeah, the cruiserweight division yeah. into five minutes of hot garbage on yeah, Raw. They got less TV time in a three hour show for some reason. They got and less TV time than job. This matches. finally led to what the new show, and it's been awesome ever since. The new show of Two Hundred Five Live, created solely for that division, is an hour show uh, based off of the Two Hundred Five division. You have to be two hundred five pounds or less, um, and it's one hour after SmackDown Live. So you know, interesting, really interesting. To uh, see. I'm glad they they brought back the cruiserweights. It was you know they were gone for so long, and no, but nobody ever thought. WWE five years ago would be going down this route with the cruiserweights. That's why they yeah. they got them all out of there. Yeah. And now they're finally starting to bring them back because they know how they appreciate how good of cruise like good cruiserweight wrestling is. Yeah. I think Triple H finally like showed like Vince like, hey, look at how good these guys are. They can get over with the crowd. Yeah. And well, look at the matches it. they can put on. It's just, it's so good. Like the the whole show itself from start to finish has been good. Every episode has been unreal this year and. I'm loving the direction for 205 Live. I'm just worried about how long it's actually going to stick and how long they actually are going to put time behind this and how they're going to be influ- – I mean they get influenced by appearing – are they going to appear at every pay-per-view? Like what if it's two brand split pay-per-views? Are they going to have matches at both or is it just going to be at Raw's one or just be a SmackDown's one? It's going to be interesting to see what they do. I think it should just stick to SmackDown. Like it, it'd be that third hour of SmackDown just dedicated to 205 Live. Just stick it with SmackDown. That's all – I can say about that. I mean, I know. That's just 205. Unreal. Ever since. And I also like how they actually, on 205 Live, they're building these storylines. Like, you look at, like, they usually have three to four matches on 205 Live. Yeah. And everyone has a storyline behind it, which is what they wouldn't do on Raw. They would just bring these guys out, and they, they'd they just be like, oh, this is a new cruiserweight yeah. named Noam Dar. And it was like, who the Perkins fuck are you? Squash. Like, who are you? Like, give <laughs> like, me something about yeah. you. Give me a promo package. Give me something about this guy. And the promo packages in 205 Live have been unreal. Like, they've been fucking phenomenal. Whoever's doing the work behind those guys, like... Props to you because those have been phenomenal promo packages. And every feud, they're building every feud between the Noam Dar and Cedric Alexander with the whole Alicia Fox love triangle thing. Yeah. You got the the Brian Kendrick. Well, you had the Brian Kendrick, Rich Swan, and TJ Perkins triple threat thing going on. Now you add Neville to that. It just like, wow. Yeah. And then you have the Jack Gallagher and Arya Davari feud God, going Gallagher on. Gallagher is so good. <laughs> Gallagher's fantastic. You had that. <laughs> The, the gentleman's, gentleman's duel, duel. <laughs> the umbrella and against the lead pipe Boom. hit him right on the head with it he just reminds uh, me of like a re- like a regal type style wrestler and, and watching the intro it looks like they're really like big behind gallagher like they're really big behind the division he's gonna be one of the head guys in the division I yeah because he stands future. out like yeah. people watch it and they're like wow i want to see that guy yeah, 205 live has been so good and it's it's so it sucks because they tape it after an already tired crowd from smackdown i know i would like you said that they should move it to full sale or have it beforehand because that way the crowd's yeah. like ready like they're ready they're yeah, ready and if they, for some and they, wrestling and like the people that know are like oh shit we gotta get to the arena early like an hour early. we want to watch 205 live because they know some good's gonna happen it's gonna make the people show up early and that's that's dollar signs for be get the people to show up an hour early start spending more money on merchandise food like they're making more and more money yeah so that's you, a smart start idea start off with something good like that yeah i mean it kind of sucks because like we've always said they end the sh- they end the night if you're there and kids have school in the morning yeah. and then they have to stay there to watch the like the noam dars and yeah. the tj perkins yeah. instead of ending with like an aj styles or dean ambrose that's why it sucks that you honestly think it should just go to full sale just the full sale crowd would appreciate they appreciate the cruiserweight classic 
and, and, and especially get behind it. We've seen what happened when they go to a still crowd like Memphis yeah. or somewhere in North Carolina. Yeah, like they don't give a fuck. Get behind they don't give it. a shit. Like the Full Sail University, they build people in NXT. They've built them. They're a, they're a if soul. If you can get over with the Full Sail crowd, yeah. you can get over with the WWE yeah, crowd. Exactly. That's so. the addition. If they want to still keep that small division on Raw, have them be at Full Sail and then bring them up to Raw for that. That have a mini division on Raw and have the main division on Two Hundred Five Live. Plain and simple. WWE is not smart enough to do that. No, they're not. So we're going to move on to the Alberto Del Rio and Paige Saga of 2016. <laughs> this was not even an on-screen thing that happened, yeah, but it was one of the biggest storylines of the year. <laughs> ever. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Um, it, this all started behind the scenes, as you just said. This wasn't on TV. Del Rio uh, and Paige, you know, started dating. Whatever. There was a uh, picture released on Instagram of them both like Disneyland or something. Yeah. Uh, Del Rio leaves the WWE at the end of his contract due to false promises and lack of direction for him. I don't we blame him. You know what? Him. You don't blame him. Whatever. If they promised him like world title matches and stuff and then said they put him against the League of Nations, you know, fuck that. I'd leave too. <laughs> um, Paige gets injured. So after he leaves, you know, there's more and more released about Paige relationship and it's come clear and clear. Uh, Paige gets injured. He injures her neck. Uh, she has to have this certain surgery in her neck, and now she's out six to eight months uh, for the rehab. So, in that time, so far, she's been suspended twice. She's failed to bring the papers for the drugs she's taking because of the neck injury. Two WWE and say that she's taking those drugs. So she got Eva Marie suspended twice. And what well, doesn't matter. I mean, she's not wrestling any ways, but she got suspended twice. It's bad for your track record. Um, and then people were saying there was speculation backstage that WWE was threatening to to get rid of her if she didn't break up with Del Rio and yeah, that and whole that's saga. Why they, they split them in the brand split, and that was like just a f- that's just like adding fuel to the fire. WWE, I don't know why they fucking were if they were true and they were doing that. That's really wrong. And then Paige kind of didn't help her own cause when she said that you know she wouldn't put her career in front of somebody she loved yeah. or whatever. Um, Del Rio now owns his own restaurant. Um, in San Antonio. Him. Yep, and he is the president of an MMA company that's just starting out. So, Dario's done good for himself. He's wrestled a couple of indie matches here and there, and he's not done wrestling yet. Um, just part time status in the indies. And uh, Paige did take to Twitter, and so Dario confirmed in an interview that Paige is not done with the WWE. Thank you, Christ. If you, she was going to drop her fucking career for this guy. <laughs> But I have more respect for Del Rio as he's come out in that recent interview and say he's not holding Paige back and he wants Paige to go back to the WWE. I respect him a lot more now that he's come out and said that. And I really hope Paige has a uh, well recovery and full recovery leading into her return to the WWE. And they're saying around April, May of 2017. And I think he said that because he ended WWE on good terms this time. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like a mutual. It was the end of his contract. They mute. It was like a, a one year opt out thing, and they mutually decided to part ways because he didn't like the direction he was going. It wasn't like last time where he was fired because he got into an argument with some goon backstage. Sinkara. It was Sinkara. <laughs> I think no, it was some guy calling like oh. saying a racial slur to him. And oh yeah, him that's in the right. Face. I thought it was Sinkara. No, but. <laughs> So, yeah, they ended on good terms, and I'm, I'm glad he's helping Paige along with their career instead of holding her back with it. Yeah, good. I, I Again, I have a lot more respect for him that he's doing that, and he's not the one and preventing her from returning. Like we've always said, hopefully that all this time off for Paige will get her her mind back into it and get her motivated again because near the end of her last WWE run, she was just, she looked like she didn't want to be there anymore. Yeah. And she needs that fire back that we seen when she first got called up and when she was NXT champion. I hope we see that same page when she comes back. I do too. And again, she's my girl. I got to be biased. So I would love to have Paige come back and, <laughs> you know, I, I want her back so bad. Like I, I have a whole shelf dedicated to this girl. Like, come on. <laughs> <sighs> Um, the pop she's going to get when she comes back. It's going to be tremendous. Like, I hope so. I, I I don't even, you know, I really don't give a fuck if she gets a pop or not. <laughs> like literally, I don't give a you, fuck. It's your own I just pop. want her to be back. I'll, I'll give her the biggest pop of the night. How about that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll move on to yeah. the next topic. The return of the traditional Survivor Series matches. Small topic here. Yeah. Um, we had the return of those, but it was a little bit different. We had a, a different kind of one. So it was Raw vs. SmackDown like we had in the past. Uh, it was different this year by a little bit. They had three different ones, and there was a men's five on five, a tag team five on five, and a women's five on five. 
Yeah, I mean, it. all three matches were great, except the tag team one, I kind of missed it, because I had to go look for this fucking Chris Jericho Drunken <laughs> In Man t-shirt. There was only, like, one oh, left in the yeah. whole arena. I had to go down every section. Oh, it, it, yeah, I felt bad for Gilbert Capu. He missed a whole great match. Um, but he went after and watched it uh, on network after, so good for Gilbert Capu. Just us being there, that was... First time being at like a major pay per view like that. We went to the the NXT takeover the night before. Which was and amazing, like such an experience, guys. If you have an opportunity to go see a takeover or a big pay per view like that, do it. Just don't even double think it. Just do it because we had an incredible weekend. The the crowds that go to those events are nuts. Yeah, goons. It's, it's just the atmosphere is amazing. You're when you're say you're out in public with your friends and stuff. You you don't you're not really that much. No one's comfortable. Sitting there talking about wrestling in public. No, we we, can't, we I mean I'm not trying to toot our horns. We are because we don't give a fuck where we talk about wrestling anywhere. But you're not in that atmosphere where you can talk about wrestling out loud and then have someone from somewhere go join and join in on that or laugh with you and know what you're fucking talking about. Like that's what a, a wrestling atmosphere like that is like. It's, it's we, like we can be there and be goons and be those wrestling goons and everyone laughs and knows what you're talking about and like we were walking around. The fucking ACC doing the freaking uh, too sweet thing to en- to random people. <laughs> He's going, yeah, yo, too sweet, and then someone will do it back to you, like or even in the train, uh, like it, it was, it was like it was like you were with your own religion or like your yeah. own cult. It was just like <laughs> it's you, awesome. Wrestling fans people. are their own cult, and it's amazing. I love that I found wrestling, and I love wrestling that way, and that where we can be a part of that. So Survivor Series is a big weekend for us. Um, main event by the squash of the year, Goldberg versus Lesnar. <laughs> Still can't believe that actually happened. We witnessed that. We and were going nuts. Um, you can go see that in our vlog, by the way. Trying to do a little bit of promoting right here. <laughs> Got to finally see my girl Sasha yeah. Banks wrestle, finally. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it was awesome. Just an unreal weekend to see NXT TakeOver oh, Toronto. The Ty Dillon Bobby Series. Roode thing was probably the best part of the weekend. That was awesome. I we were so behind our boy Ty Dillinger with that, and you know Bobby Roode was awesome too. So that was just such a match the where I'm like, Canadian I don't care who the fuck wins. It was just an amazing match. The two Canadian boys, yeah, two great Canadian kids, Ontario right there. boys too. Ontario kids, I tell you about <laughs> these guys. Yeah, Don Cherry reference. Yeah. If you guys know hockey, anyways, let's move on. We'll move on. Undertaker's return this year. We got a return from the dead man since WrestleMania. Many speculated beforehand that he was done with the WWE as there was a one point at the end of the match where Undertaker, he took off his gloves and people were saying that was a significant way of saying he was done. I'm like, or he was just taking his fucking gloves off if he <laughs> wanted to. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Oh, he's taking his gloves because that's a ceremonial uh, thing of how wrestlers end their career. What? Or he was just taking his fucking gloves off because he wrestled a Hell in a Cell match at 52 years old. They, uh... <laughs> They go way in depth about anything like, someone God, does. God, I'm reading. I'm going. What the fuck is wrong with you people? <laughs> He's not done. <laughs> if he was done, we know he was done. He let us know. <laughs> um, it's the Undertaker. It's not some random guy. Yeah. Uh, so he returns on SmackDown Live during the Cutting Edge segment, the Return of Edge, in the same night. That was a fucking awesome episode of SmackDown Live. As we just said, the brand split is produced awesome episodes and watchable episodes of SmackDown, like this one. And he says he's back taking souls and digging holes. And WrestleMania no longer defines, defines him. Me. So basically what that means is he's going to have a bigger role in 2017 other than just WrestleMania. I cannot wait. Hopefully that hip surgery he just had has just fixed a bunch of problems for The Undertaker. And, you know, we see him like in a cane status. He wrestles once in a while. You know, there's that one month where he has like three matches. And there's one month where he has one match. He's just he's back in, in some sort of role to be that like demon. Like Kane's back to be that demon Kane role. To be the, the monster figure. K- Taker's back to be that guy taking souls, you know, and digging holes, as he just said. To be that guy, you know, just don't mess with and the it, dead man. And it makes another draw for SmackDown. Yeah. And, and you know what? Taker's the kind of guy where, I, where I, don't, I wouldn't mind. I don't think anyone out there should mind to be back in that part-time status. He, mm-hmm. He's deserved everything he's going to be given in 2017 and deserves to... On n- nothing but respect. He's the most for loyal his part-time uh, role. The most loyal employee WWE of all all yeah. time. So I'm I'm loving this. I'm hoping he has a big role in 2017. Hopefully, his WrestleMania match with John Cena. Everyone wants to fucking see it, as we just saw a Chicago crowd <laughs> yelling Undertaker to John Cena, him teasing it a little bit. I'm hoping it's Undertaker John Cena. Just get it out of the way. Everyone wants to fucking see that fantasy matchup. It was like with Rock and Cena. Everyone wanted to see it. And we need to see Rock, or we need to see Cena and Undertaker. We need to see that. Don't fucking make him face like Baron Corbin or some stupid bullshit like that. <laughs> make him, like, have him have a relevant WrestleMania match. I really didn't even want him to face Shane. 
Like that was the year. Actually, last year, this year was supposed to be the one. Sorry, 2016 was supposed to be the the year that he faced John Cena. Cena, and got, Cena got injured. Again, la- the year before that, he faced Bray Wyatt. No one give a fuck. <laughs> Bray Wyatt wasn't established face of fear yet. He was still young in that sense. I, I just I did, it, they rushed that way too quick. And the last match was WrestleMania 30, which was anywhere relevant because he lost it. I don't even want to talk about that match. That match. Sucked. Yeah, Taker looks like a promising year in 2017, and that return of 2016 was like the best thing he's had in 2016. I'll leave Taker for you since he was your boy, so I won't say anything about it. <laughs> Um, let's get into some NXT 2016 call-ups this year. Wow. Um, wow, big pile of call-ups. We had Finn Balor, American Alpha, Alexa Bliss, Carmella, Enzo and Cass, Baron Corbin, Bailey, Sami Zayn, Nia Jax, Dana Botch, Mojo Rawley, and Apollo Crews, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah. first we had the, right after WrestleMania, we had um, Enzo and Cass. Baron Corbin at WrestleMania winning the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle what Royal. What a fucking in his debut. debut that was. Uh, Sami Zayn officially being called up. Yeah. Um, that sucked for him because he got called up to face John Cena that one time and got injured. <laughs> he fucking threw his arm out fucking trying to hype the crowd up. Way to go, man. <laughs> and then uh, Dana Botch eventually came up with Emma and then eventually went over to be Charlotte's little lap dog. Yeah, prodigy. And then threw the bland... The, the bland... The brand bland... <laughs> yeah, the bland brand split for the Raw. The bland was brand bland split. For Raw, I'm trying to fucking like, say that with... Yeah. <laughs> like, I tried to make that funny and it just failed miserably. <laughs> um, we had Finn Balor, who was like a top pick for, for Raw. He was the yeah. third pick at, behind Charlotte and yeah. Rollins. And Seth Rollins injured him. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then we had American Alpha, Alexa yeah. Bliss, Carmella... American Alpha, my boys, if you guys don't know, my, my favorite tie team who just won the titles. I was so hyped for that. Yeah. Uh, Baron Corbin got drafted to SmackDown eventually. Nia Jax got called up. Mojo Rawley went to SmackDown and Apollo Crews. Yeah. And they, then Bailey eventually got called up later yeah. after SummerSlam. Yeah. So those were all the call-ups. Apollo Crews, wow. though, fuck, man. He's been the most disappointed call-up ever. <laughs> they, haven't, they can't figure out what to do with him. They tried giving him a spelling gimmick, which was, oh, like, I, didn't, I hated that. <laughs> Thank God they ended it, and now they're just, until they figure out what to do, they've just been putting him in dark matches. They put him in one match with Miz, and they had yeah. him bury, Miz bury him, and then that was it. Yeah. But, but, like, the, the amount of um, impact that all these call-ups have made, like, you look at, like, I know Finn Balor, he got injured, but what he did when in the first month yeah. he was there, he Incredible. won the, the Fatal 4 way to become number one contender, and then he yeah. brought back the Demon gimmick, and then he won the Universal first ever Universal Champion. Championship. Yeah. Then had to forfeit forfeited the night after, which really yeah, sucked. And he's gonna have a big year in 2017. Oh yeah, 100. And then American um, Alpha, kind of a slow start for them. We expect them to have a slow build. Yeah. And then surprisingly, just this week, shockingly, won the tag team titles Fuck. this week. Wow. Like I didn't expect them. To, I thought they were gonna get their crowning moment at, like WrestleMania or something. But they're definitely yeah. the future of the tag team division. Like. Yeah. Jordan and Gable are like some of the greatest athletes the WWE has. Yeah. Um, Alexa Bliss, God, we don't have enough time in the day for me to talk about Best Alexa Bliss. Best call up, I think, out of everyone here. I mean, I didn't want to be biased and say that. But I'm but not I being biased because be I know it is because she's turned out to be the best heel woman that WWE's ever had. Like, you look at what she did in NXT. Yeah. She didn't get anything. Nothing. She was. She, she was Blake and Murphy. Blake stooge. and Murphy, and then she had like a. Not even. She never even had an NXT women's title shot. No. And then she got called up, and look, she's taken the, the reins. Yeah, the, she's not the taking Roman the division Reigns. by storm. She, she's she's the head of the division. And look at what she's done as as a credible heel. You look at her mannerisms. You look at her gimmick. You yeah. look at everything she does in the ring. She's just a fantastic heel. I yeah. can't say nothing about my girl Alexa Bliss. No, she's great. She's I, I can't. I'm I'm not sitting here. I can't sit here and hate on a girl because I don't blame you for liking this girl. Like she's not my favorite on SmackDown because I can't. You know we have to stay true to our girls. But she's just been one of the greatest call ups I've ever seen. And we'll get into another call up. Car is in Carmella, my girl. What she's done since her call-up has been amazing. Like She had almost one of the feuds of the year at women's division only. If we look at just the women's division, she's had almost a feud of the year with with Nikki Bell. It wasn't even for a title. It was a secondary feud. Like, that's what it, how, how they made that feud so good without a title is beyond me. And like that broke. Uh, speaking of breaking of fourth walls, this broke a lot of fourth walls because Carmella's called Nikki Bell out on everything savage, that we make fun of on her everything, for. Like, last week. And still doing it to this day. Yeah, the silicone's going to your yeah. head, Nikki. Like, just like, stuff like that. Like It's phenomenal. Carmella... 
and they they realize that Carmelo might be better suited for a heel role because she yeah. wasn't getting that face reaction. No, and she's kind of got like that like that bitchy like yeah, she can only be that face reaction when she's with Enzo and Cass. So until that ever happens where they get reunited, and she will go back to Enzo and Cass if they ever get on the same roster because it's it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Yeah, they got. She's just they're doing this now because they want to give her that singles run because she deserves it, and she's um, done great as a, as, yeah. a, as a secondary yeah. heel. Yeah. Enzo and Cass. I mean, yeah, they again, really as we just saw it. <laughs> been one of the brightest stars of the tag. They're team probably division. the most over tag team. Even yeah. I'd say even more than New Day. And, and, and it was went back to when people were like, "Oh, they're not going to get over in the main roster. People are going to forget about them." No, they've been over since. It's the just, crowds they haven't had a direction. That's they, all. They've been every time their theme hits, the crowd goes fucking. They're everyone's out of their seat. And they they, they sing ballistic. their whole. They could do their whole promo without even Enzo yeah. saying anything. Like that one time when his mic. When uh, the, the club turned their mic off, and then the whole crowd did the entire fucking promo. And like, then they got moreover when Enzo legitimately got hurt against the Vaude Villains at that one yeah. pay per view, and then he was out with that concussion. Then he came back. Yeah. So they have just but they have just taken the, the tag team vision by storm. A new type of tag team that we haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. I think that's why they're getting over because they're new and unique. Yeah. Um. Everyone's buying the Enzo and Cass merch, so yeah. they're great for WWE. And WWE loves that. If you can sell merch, WWE fucking loves you. Um, then you got Baron Corbin, and your boy Baron Corbin, huge call up. They won the Andre Giant more Battle Royal, and they still label. I guess you get that label every time you win it. So he's got the label for until WrestleMania. Um, Baron Corbin, huge ever since then. I mean, he got a slow start after WrestleMania. They kind of like it's because it sucked. If there was a brand split after WrestleMania, he still could have been big. Yeah, that's but why the he brand just got shoved under him. the carpet after. That's and, what we said. We needed yeah. the brand split for guys like him because. They didn't really have any direction for him, and they yeah. still didn't really in the, the beginning of the brands, but they hadn't faced Kalisto yeah. and bullshit. But now, now it looks like they're, they're pushing him, and this is great. I'm loving it. I'm hoping 2017 is a big year for my boy Baron Corbin. He deserves it. He's such a good heel. He's the perfect heel main event person. His entrance is fantastic. He has great mic skill. Like he's the best homegrown person so far. He's got great mic skills. His in-ring product is amazing. For a big guy, he's got some speed. Like he can run around the ring pretty quick. He's agile, yeah. He's oh, he's just he's got almost, that mean streak behind him. You he's know, so close to the complete package. So I'm hoping 2017 is a and, really good year for him. Be, we were putting him and Apollo Cruz on the same level when they first got called up, and then now look at them. Like yeah. Apollo Cruz is just being. Sh- I'm glad they they use Baron Corbin yeah. properly. Uh, starting to use him properly. Sami Zayn has been up and down for him in 2016. <laughs> um, he went from having match of the year candidate with Shinsuke Nakamura, NXT Takeover Dallas, to some good matches going down and up and down and up. Then squashed by Strowman recently, and then fuck who knows what's going on with him. He's facing Strowman next week, so who the fuck knows and who the fuck cares? No, I hope Sami Zayn. I hope Sami Zayn has a bigger year, but right now I can't give a fuck. <laughs> Bailey's push, like we said, it was going to be a yeah. slow build for Bailey. She yeah. got called up as Sasha's yeah. surprise partner, and it looks like the direction they're going to is her versus Charlotte for the women's title at WrestleMania, which will probably win it from Charlotte at WrestleMania, ending her pay per view streak. I'm guessing that's probably going to be the end of the streak. She's obviously the yeah. most charismatic and popular yeah. woman. I'm not. I mean, I don't. I don't think Bailey's the best technical wrestler at all. No, but but still, I definitely. Think I think they're still in the back of his head. They're still thinking she's going to be the WWE of the women's division, like the John Cena of the women's division. They're still. That's probably why they're slow building her because Cena got a slow build getting into the face of the company. So if their plan currently still is to have Bailey, even though I think it's probably going to be Charlotte now. Um, the slow build is good for Bailey, and I'm loving the idea of her winning the title at WrestleMania to end the streak. It just makes sense, and then maybe you know what? Feud with Sasha after that, because then by then Sasha can have a full fl- like a full heel turn back to the Sasha everyone wants to see, and you have Bailey the face, Sasha the heel, and feud after that. Just fucking feud after WrestleMania. I, I want to see a little bit more in ring ability from Bailey, though. Like I'm just not, I'm not like over the top impressed with her in-ring ability i love well, her character. i don't think they've let her because definitely her in-ring pockets was better in nxt than it was now so i don't think WWE is letting her i think that gets i think that's going with the slow build i don't think they want her to show too much or else people are gonna be like why the fuck are you not pushing her yet so i think that's why they're letting her slow down a little okay. bit and slowly push out maybe the more move bigger of a move set once she becomes champion i hope so yeah. And then speaking of movesets, we've got Nia Jax, who came up and just squashed people. Just fucking runs. We saw her surprise and we're like, oh my god, she's a fucking bulldozer out there. She just <laughs> runs over everybody. I'm like, she's the fu- She is the next Samoan bulldozer, Nia Jax. Is she a Samoan? <laughs> 
She's a, and she's related to the rocks. You know yeah. she's gonna get a push at some point. Now she's facing Sasha, so we'll see where that goes. Mm-hmm. Then we got fucking the lap dog Dana Botch. Go go back to NXT. Fucking you deserve to go back to the performance center. Mm-hmm. You need. I mean, to. I love me some Dana Brooke visually when she doesn't flex. Entering product, get the fuck Terrible. out of. Just get off TV. Just don't oh even go in the God. ring. Don't you dare. Dana Botch, don't you stare, step foot in the ring and get near any of my wrestlers. That. Or talk on the mic. She's cringe on the yeah, mic she's too. Gone. Mm, playing time is over. Um, like the, that's what she. Her nickname suits her well. The botches she's had in the ring. She's almost yeah. killed Bailey. Uh, nothing else to say about Dana Bot. Mojo Rawley, him and Zack yeah, Ryder look. Said, they just, look promising in the hype bros before Zack Ryder got hurt. So I don't know what they're going to do with Mojo Rawley from yeah. here on until Zack Ryder. I think they're going to wait for Zack Ryder because both this team has a lot of potential. I think they see the potential this team could have. Maybe um, maybe while he's gone, they they do the Gronk and Mojo oh Rawley thing at God. WrestleMania. <laughs> Hey, that's, that's another way to bring in a superstar at WrestleMania. Have Gronk appear. I mean, have Gronk Super and Mojo be do done something. by then. So you know, maybe have him face the fashion police or something. I don't fucking know. <laughs> but Mojo Raleigh looks like he drank fifteen Red Bulls before he comes out. He's yeah. you know, hype Just guy, fucking high high on life, man. And, and, and Apollo but, Cruz. Yeah, we already know what to say about him. So we'll move on. Um, <laughs> move on to the Jobbers Revolution. We'll title it <laughs> hashtag the best. <laughs> the best hashtag going out there, Dumpster Fire, the official hashtag of No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We had a plethora of jobbers in 2016 and jobber matches. Thanks to Braun Strowman and Nia Jax. Yeah, and it, a lot of it happened after the brand split. They're fucking really useless. Because apparently we got Nia Jax getting called up. The one I'm going to point out is Nia Jax is called up. And saying, so, you know, I can say the same with Braun Strowman. They used jobber matches like they had. We're supposed to be matches that promote the wrestler that we don't know about. We knew about Braun Strowman before the brand split. We knew he was the third Wyatt member that they brought in. Nia Jax, we all knew from NXT. So why the fuck did they get jobber squash matches to promote them? Like it, it's, it's getting it got tedious with with like, Braun okay, Strowman the first because week. like after a month we were still getting the same shit. Like, okay, first week, whatever. But, like, after two months of the same thing, it was literally every week, it was either, bro- like, one week it was Strowman, the next week it was Nia Jax, and they would just flip-flop between And the, the thing with, matches. like, the Jobbers having mic time before their match and the, the, the shit they said, I'm like, what? <laughs> what? And it was, not only did Raw get those, SmackDown had its fair share. We had fucking Gary the Milkman <laughs> Millman show up out of nowhere. In his tidy whitey. Before, uh, uh, before Styles was going like, what the fuck is this on commentary? Before the, before the main event. He didn't even have had- a match. He's in his fucking tidy whiteies, and Kane fuck comes out and just demol. <laughs> what did we just watch? <laughs> Gary the Milkman Millman got five minutes of TV time. Five minutes more than Bear Corbin at the time. That's or how sad Apollo that Cruz. was. Apollo Cruz, they, they cut short on Apollo Cruz. And, and then AJ SmackDown Styles gets match. the one and only debut of James Ellsworth, who somehow was allowed to pin AJ Styles three times in three different matches. I don't know what. The, <laughs> this guy got squashed by Braun Strowman, and then they brought him back for an episode of SmackDown to be like Styles' partner because no one else would team with him. And then he somehow got this huge following on Twitter. And they brought they like WWE like the fans like revolted to try to get this guy signed, and they finally signed this guy for whatever reason. Which I mean, okay, it's a good story. He's been in wrestling for a long time. Like to beat the a a guy like AJ Styles three times made zero fucking sense. If they did it against the Miz, whatever, fuck it, have him beat the Miz and had the Miz be pissed off every goddamn week. These but not in the world title picture. It just didn't make any sense whatsoever. And you know what? Now that he's like being out of the main title picture, I'm actually happy. And now they're doing this thing with Carmella, which it's cringe to me because I fucking love Carmella. Ugh, just whatever. He's away from the main title picture. I'm happy. Um, one underrated jobber I want to point out, and you're going to laugh at this. Britt Baker. <laughs> Why did we not sign her? She has the best gimmick standing in front of her. Like, get baked. Like, she could have been... <laughs> That could have been a t-shirt. What, just lose every week? Yeah. <laughs> she gets baked. Or she beats people. She She's the one squashing people. You just got baked by Britt Baker. <laughs> I think that could have been a great signing. <laughs> I miss Britt Baker. Hashtag bring back Britt Baker. I thought you liked Ariel Monroe the best. Oh, Ariel Monroe. Oh, <laughs> being fast. Or the guy that said, I like being in the ring with hot, sweaty men. Whoever that guy was. <laughs> like, those things. <laughs> <laughs> Why were they given mic time before their matches? <laughs> And uh, um, Americo, the oh, guy with the mask. Oh, my mask. God, yeah. <laughs> like, that these is, guys. 
like the they jobbers became, were real in 2016. They, they were, were uh, they were a big part of Raw for the first part of the brand. Yeah, split. <laughs> for some reason they made they were like the main focus of Raw for a three hour gap. Which that's is that's why Raw does not need to be three hours because we get filler garbage like jobber matches like yeah. that. Ugh, so I don't we're, know. we're hoping that we see the end of the jobber revolution yeah. in 2016 to 2017. Yeah. One thing I want to touch base on is the takeovers that NXT's had in 2016. They have literally taken over. <laughs> they have been better than the follow-up WWE pay-per-view right the day after. It's been crazy. <laughs> like, like it's every, produced, page, every takeover match has been better than its WWE main it's roster counterpart. It's produced match of the candidates such as Nakamura and Zayn. Uh, the revival versus DIY and a two out of three falls match that we watched that was fucking epic. Like the, every single takeover this year has been amazing, and it's, it's kicked the following pay per view out of the water from start to finish. Maybe every that's, single one. Maybe the WWE should follow that. They only have four pay per views a year basically for NXT. Exactly, and there's so much hype behind these takeovers. They build for months for these yeah. pay per views. Take uh, Triple H. Why are you not running the company, man? Is Triple H running SmackDown? Is he running SmackDown? I bet you he's running SmackDown. That's why it's so good. <laughs> uh, but it shows that you don't need a pay-per-view every month in order to have a good product. Yeah. And it's it just look at the people that they called up this year from NXT. They basically invaded the picture. Look at the guy. Like Kevin Owens came from NXT. Finn Balor, when he was up, came from NXT. The whole roster came from NXT. Yeah. The Shield, NXT. You got Ambrose, Reigns, and Rollins, NXT. The, the Four Horsewomen, NXT. Everyone, yeah, everyone mainly is from NXT. AJ Styles, not, but everyone's from NXT. Most of them have Most been built them. up. Yeah, and NXT has been a major part of WWE. I don't know where WWE would be today without NXT. NXT. Literally, it'd probably be the same dumpster fire garbage from 2010, 2012 that we got during that lame ass PG era. It'd be almost the same lines as that. Basically, or the reality era. Ooh. And. I guess we'll go into hopeful main roster call-ups for NXT yeah. standouts. So we'll go one by one. Ty Dillinger, obviously number one. I'm hoping he gets called up. Everyone's hoping for that Royal Rumble number 10 spot. Um, the crowd, every every time there's a, there's a, something going on outside the ring and the ref's got to count like from one to 10, it's just 10 everywhere. Yeah, every city has gone to. You know a guy can get over when that's happened in every fucking city. Like, it's going to get to a point where everybody's going to tell the ref... No count outs anymore. WWE is strictly a no count out match uh, company. Um, but yeah, Ty Dillinger is definitely going to be really over when it's called up. I like JD's idea for uh, Ty Dillinger. He thinks he's going to get called up, Royal Rumble number 10 spot. He's going to feud with The Miz and eventually lead to the IC title match at WrestleMania where Ty Dillinger is going to beat The Miz for the IC title at WrestleMania. Wow, will that ever get fucking hype beyond be a the huge underdog story if his theme is hype his character is hype he is just the definition of hype man <laughs> if he wins that IC title it's not just because he's, he's from niagara falls okay <laughs> um he, if he wins that title at wrestlemania the crowd will go absolutely fucking ballistic just like they're going to if he's number 10 at the royal rumble this year he the crowd is gonna go fucking nuts <laughs> he's gonna get dane o'brien yes chant quality 100%. And he deserves it, man. And he's, he's been, good. It's, we're not just saying because of the hype factor. He's actually a good wrestler. Look, this guy's been with the company since the OVW days. Yeah. Like, he, he was Stan. If you guys remember when HBK was pissed off backstage, and he's like, yo, you, what's your name? The guy's like, Stan. Super kicks him. I just kicked Stan. The whole DX days. That was Ty Dillinger. He took a kick from HBK. <laughs> backstage. Backstage to get him over. Unbelievable! This and guy's been with the company. Then he was forever. Gavin. Then he was Gavin Spears for that crappy ECW era, and didn't really get a push. They got then got released, and then came back to NXT, rebuilt himself with this ten gimmick, and now look where it is on NXT. He's just he deserves everything he's about to get. I, I hope. hope so. We yeah. hope so. Yeah. Next one, obviously Samoa Joe. What he's done since his debut in NXT has been fucking amazing. He's just instantly become the dominant force he's First instantly going to become champion. yeah he's instantly going to become that dominant force when he gets called he's up he's going to be he's going to be a main a main title guy when he gets yeah. called up i think he's going to raw to be honest uh, i think vince would love him on raw there's lots of potential feuds for him on raw and i get into that because the next guy it's interesting prediction for me shinsuke nakamura is going to smackdown that would be awesome yeah. he fits smackdown better yeah. anyway as a he, better wrestler for him, and for, I know I always say the age factor. The age factor for Nakamura, he SmackDown is a perfect 
place where he can not have to wrestle full time load. He can be there once in a while and not have to wrestle live events. Uh, be at SmackDown in a non physical role, something. Um, so Nakamura for sure. I think he's going to go SmackDown. That's just my I prediction. Ho- I hope he gets called up, yeah. but the, may, they might have him run with the NXT title for, yeah, for a while. Long I think time. He's, until they they figure out the next phase of NXT. He, he might be. Um, he might be in the draft. You never know, yeah. but. Bobby Roode, we hope, gets called up. I think once he gets called up, he's going to be, again, another guy just be fucking over beyond over. <laughs> his, his, his theme is going to be theme. sung by every fucking Raw. If he's on Raw <laughs> or SmackDown every goddamn week. Because look at NXT. Every week he's on NXT, this, the crowd sings his song. Every time he's going to be on Raw or SmackDown, the crowd's going to fucking thing, think, sing his theme song every goddamn week. He's got week. potential to be Until they get to heel. Memphis where the crowd's like, mm, how do we read this? With the lyrics to that song? Who is Bobby Roode? But he's got potential <laughs> to be a big heel. Yeah. And people should know for he and Memphis should know him because TNA. Yeah. It was like there. main area for TNA. Um, um Bobby Roode definitely deserves everything he's gonna get in twenty seventeen, we hope. We I hope really, he gets uh yeah. called up. I'm pff, Raw or SmackDown, I can't tell. It's probably gonna be Raw. Probably one percent. Um to spruce up the tag team division, they need to bring up the revival. Yeah, he, uh, they need it for Raw. I can't. Yeah. SmackDown's fine with their tag teams. They need Raw. They need the the help for Raw. I think they'd be a great dominant team for Raw, and they'd be that team to hold the titles for a long time. Look what they just did in NXT. They were such dominant yeah. tag team champions, the first ever two time champion. <laughs> They're the John Cena of NXT, kicking yeah. out of eight finishers every yeah. title. But match. Then again, I say that what's happened before with dominant teams coming out of NXT, <laughs> the Ascension, they get jobbed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but I think that a revival could get more over than the Ascension did coming up because back then when the Ascension came out, there was no brand split. There was no room for them to to break. And to be out, honest, so. the Ascension aren't as close to as good of wrestlers yeah. as the revival so, revival are. It's a, it'll see be interesting to see. But those are some potential NXT calls we think that are going to happen. Um, uh, also, Oscar, but Oscar, she, yeah, she might carry the load in NXT. Yeah, because they uh, need to, they need to, uh, to figure it out too. Because um, they, they need to restock the shelves for the women's division yeah. down there. Because they got Ember Moon coming up. But other than that, who knows what they're going to do with that division? Yeah. But Oscar might carry the NXT women's title for a bit longer. But I eventually think she will get called up, and I think she'll go to SmackDown. Yeah, I think she deserves to be on SmackDown. She looked good on SmackDown. Going to um, <laughs> former superstar return. So former <laughs> superstars that have returned in 2016. We have a big list here. Um, we'll start off right at the bat for the cruiserweight division. D. Brian Kendrick. What huge, a comeback for him! Huge cruiserweight classic tournament for him. Uh, even though he lost, uh, Daniel Bryan saw a lot of potential in him. I think he had the strong influence on WWE signing him after that. Um, Getting a and, second chance with WWE again. Yeah, and look what he's done with the Cruiserweight division ever he since was, it started. Yeah, he was a great top heel yeah. until Neville is now taking over yeah. that spot. But he, he great think, job. He won yeah. the Cruiserweight I think title. he's just taking a break now. I think WWE still want to keep him. But he's yeah. old. You know, he's got stuff to do. He's probably going back to do stuff with his personal life. And I think he'll be back soon yeah, as well. he's a good heel. He's putting yeah. over the new guys. And another person they had for the division, Tajiri. We just found out he's going to make his debut next week on 205 Live. Who knows, man? I mean, I've heard Tajiri's been doing a lot of stuff in New Japan that he still got it at his age. So, you know, who knows? We'll see. Um, another person, Mickey James. Uh, we just saw her at NXT Toronto uh, be the one to replace Trish Stratus because Trish Stratus is going to have another baby. Um, but Mickey James ends up getting a full time contract by WWE, and she is set to debut on SmackDown in 2017. Good so, in Mickey January, James. apparently. So good for Mickey James. I'm yep. proud of her. We saw her at that House of Hardcore event. We saw Rhino too. So good for her. Uh, Jinder Mahal came back at one point. And <laughs> fuck, he's been up and down ever since. Now he just had that just, thing with Enzo. Uh, I guess he's with Rusev now. Yeah, it's like his little. I guess it's a whatever uh, push it for him. Whatever. But he, between him and we'll go into Kurt Hawkins too. They're just there to put over guys. Like yeah. they just WWE asked for people to come back and yeah. put over a new talent, and that's why they're there. So. Kurt Hawkins hasn't done shit since, so fuck him. Um, Rhino, we know the whole story behind him. Uh, we, we say it before, we saw him at House of Hardcore, and now what he's done now, he's won the tag team titles again. And he's still, I mean, even though they lost the titles, they're still keeping him around. So him and Slater just like, eventually until they split, they're going to ride the train with the Slater and Rhino, and they're over both of them. Yep. You can't get off that train yet. They're not going to, so... Who knows? Good for Rhino. Yeah. Uh, Dudley Boys. Retired also. They came back and then they also retired. 
So, you know, good year for the Dudley boys, man. You know, Devon's now on SmackDown as a yeah. backstage yeah. Uh, agent guy. Uh, Bubba Ray, I think, is still taking indie promotions. So, uh, whatever. He do what he does. I'm not going to say anything about them. They've, they've they've done so much for the WWE in the past. So, you know, good respect to both those guys. Uh, Hall of Famers for sure. Yeah. Big Show came back for like two minutes, punched out Kevin Owens, I think, or Seth Rollins or whoever to punch. He, he lost weight. Yeah, and sick. got drafted before Cesaro. Yeah, he's losing and then weight never for, showed up. I guess he's getting in shape for his match with Sh- for Shaq. Why do you have to get in your shape for that? <laughs> Shaq's not even in shape. <laughs> Guy fucking an analyst for the for ESPN TNT, TNT for basketball. Like why? <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, and then lastly but not least, because it sucks, because he came back and instantly without even having an appearance. Got a rotator cuff injury. Shelton Benjamin. We had the promo for his return and everything. Yeah, and now he has to rehabilitate a uh, sorry a shoulder cuff injury and he won't be back till about april may time as well god he's another guy that can come back and help that mid card level of yeah, smack he's gonna 100%. be sick when he comes back he's still even though he's injured and he's still rehabbing he's come out and said that he is fully coming back to WWE. he's not leaving he promises to come back and he, he wants to have a last ride with the WWE. so good for shelton benjamin. i would love to see i was telling you a couple days ago shelton benjamin yeah. versus apollo cruz think it would be an awesome match that'd be sick yeah um we also missed your boys spirit squad and the headbangers I don't want to talk, talk about, about them, it. but no, I don't want to talk about. It. <laughs> fuck them, fuck them both. They came back and just both of them get the fuck out of here. Just fuck them both, man. I they, they, they got useless more returns of 2016. They got more t- TV time than a lot of these young guys that deserved it. Dumpster fire hashtag. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> major superstars earning their first major title, uh, first major titles this year in the WWE. Uh, Kevin Owens with the Universal Championship, uh, I think even well though, deserved. Yeah, even, even though I don't title. think it's, it's been the best run so far, but yeah. I think his it was next definitely one tainted will be good. win. But whatever. Uh, AJ Styles finally getting that WWE title and becoming the first ever wrestler to have a major title in all four major companies, and that is New Japan, Ring of Honor, WWE, and TNA. Only person to ever do that, so good for Styles. And he just won a bunch. If you go look at his Wikipedia page and see every title he's won, it's just fucking list after list after list. That's why I say he's almost the greatest of all time. The he list just- of styles. <laughs> Uh, Dean Ambrose winning his first RWB title this year, his major title at that was uh, Money in the Bank with a the cash of, in. A lot of big Ambrose fans around, so yep. it was not, and it was cool because it was the Shield. It, all he three deserved of them. it, man. He just it yeah. was everyone wanted to see the world title on him finally. But. Dean Ambrose was at like every pay per view mm-hmm. of 2015, and yeah, I don't think yeah, he, he, he's like the most durable superstar ever. But Kevin Owens is too. Kevin yeah. Owens has actually been on every one. Yeah, but he's like, never he's never got injured either. No, so. but Dean Ambrose is always on every pay-per-view, so he was well-deserved for him. Yeah. Uh, Sasha Banks, your girl, winning her first. many women's championships of 2016. <laughs> but only, we're talking about her first right now. Yeah. We're not talking about the other ones. Uh, epic fashion on Monday Night Raw. No one thought that was going to happen. That was a big shocker. Yeah, they didn't even wait for Hell in a Cell or yep. Clash of Champions. And then Becky Lynch finally winning a women's championship for her. I mean, she deserved it too. She's one she's one of the big parts of the women's revolution. So she had never had one. She yeah. always got buried by Charlotte on Raw. Yeah, so it's you know, good for her in winning her uh SmackDown. And I'm giving an honorable mention to Alexa Bliss too, even though she's only been there for fucking three months. Yeah. I'll give an honorable mention to her too. Good good for her. Um Let's get into the last topic, guys, of the show. Our 2017 outlook, what we think is going to happen in 2017, what we feel is going to happen. Royal Rumble is going to be huge this year, right off the bat. Um, it's at the Alamo Dome, it's fucking 60,000 seat arena. It's going to be a massive Royal Rumble, probably the biggest one I'm ever going to see because I didn't get to see the 97 one live. I went back and watched it after, but I think it's going to have more nostalgia this year because Darby is a better product than it was that, that time. WrestleMania 33 could be one of the most epic WrestleManias ever, I think, if it's shaping up towards the rumored matches that they're producing and uh, talking about right now. So, you know, it could be a good WrestleMania. It could be one of those good ones that are, you know, in the back of our heads going, oh, yeah, I remember WrestleMania 33. It was awesome. Um, should be interesting. See how the brand split goes continuing into 2017. Um, we don't, we haven't had a full year of it yet, so we're going to see what happens going well, into it and what they have plans for pay per views. Or if they have another draft, when that's going to be. Yeah. Um, my predictions for 2017 I think Jericho will win the U.S. title eventually and finally get that title of having every major title won in a WWE. Yeah, I think he's leaving after WrestleMania, so they better do it. From between now and WrestleMania, he better at least get. I hope so. Reigns title. doesn't fucking need it, so give it to him. Um, I think Zayn will win a major championship in 2017. 
I think he'll eventually win it. It'll probably be for a short time. Could get a Ziggler treatment and lose it the next night. But I think Zayn will win a major championship. I think he'll get some kind of big push because as yeah. being the ultimate underdog, right? Yeah. Maybe if he goes to SmackDown, who knows? I think when Balor comes back, he's going to have a huge year in 2017. I think all the plants they want to push him, they're going to just spread out through 2017. And Balor's going to have a massive year if he doesn't get injured again. I think, I think that's what happened with Raw. I think they were they, when they, the brand split happened, they're like, okay, Balor's going to be one of our top guys, and then he got hurt right after he won the title. So he had to like, scrap oh, everything. Yeah. So I think so Balor. I expect have, a huge year. If for Balor. no injuries, maybe maybe a heel turn, maybe to go against Rollins. I don't know. I think Bobaru gets called up, and eventually, you know, main events. And gets a title opportunity eventually. Well, with that gimmick and that feud, I mean, yeah. um, not feud, uh, song, how does yeah. he not get over He's going to get made event right away. I, you know what? Fuck it. As soon as he gets called up, he gets made event. Because he's, he's 40 years old already, man. Yeah. Like, the guy the, the guy doesn't need to go through the mid card. Yeah. Uh, Nakamura, I think, again, as I said before, he gets, I'm predicting he gets drafted to SmackDown. He'll be a SmackDown superstar. And that's going to be a big shocker to everybody. So, it, when that happens, who is the new face of NXT? What happens with NXT? There's when so these many guys people down there. You got up. Roderick Strong. That could be a good guy. Um, I really fucking hope the authors of Pain don't get a. Darby push. plans on going full out with the indie signing, so they're going to sign a lot of people in 2017. Do you think Kenny Omega comes? Um, this gets into that. Uh, I think Darby signs Will Osprey, oh. uh, Ricochet. I honestly think they're going to sign Broken Matt Hardy and bring the Broken gimmick over. Oh my god! And I think it's going to be an NXT man. They're going to start with NXT. Like he, it's just so over with everybody in the IWC. People love the fucking Broken gimmick. It's the best thing Matt Hardy's ever done <laughs> since his V One days, man. <laughs> he, it, it just, it's so over and it works so good for him because he plays a character. I've watched like his promos and stuff. He's actually the Broken gimmick is amazing. Jeff Hardy's fucking useless in it, though. He just stands there, and he's like a fucking <laughs> zombie. He doesn't do anything. <laughs> um, but I think they're going to sign Will Ospreay, Ricochet, Broken Matt Hardy. So they could be the guys to run it. I think Kenny Omega is going to eventually come over and join the club. I think he's eventually going to sign, man. And he, he's criticized there would be recently going, oh, they're just signing people just to sign them. He's going to he's gonna be one of those signed peoples. Um, and I think that they're the Young Bucks from ROH. I know they just re-signed a contract but no one knows how long that's going to be. So I think the Young Bucks will eventually come over. But Darby is full-on ready to go through all the indies and sign as many people as they can. Cole Cabana is probably going to be up there. <laughs> Cole Cabana is probably going to get his, his shot just to spite CM Punk again. <laughs> They're going to give him his shot. Um, Maybe um, Magnus. Yeah. Another pr- prediction, I'm thinking uh, another draft. As we said, there's going to be another draft. Probably some point, maybe August, maybe after SummerSlam. There'll be another draft. I see um, like uh, a couple other people getting called up. Sanity should get called up as, yeah. a, as a they're as a team. they're gonna be like Wyatt level good. I think like they're gonna be that team that kind of like they're almost like the Wyatt that faction. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah. the it's just their gimmicks amazing. I love it. I hope the authors of Pain don't get a push. Man, they're fucking terrible. Yeah. Um, Kurt Angle, as we said, I think Kurt Angle is gonna come back. And Kurt Angle needs one more one more match. Yeah. Or and, or that like you said that mentor gimmick with AA. Yeah. And I think Bailey's gonna have a big year this year. It's probably going to be the year of the huggers, yep. I guess. <laughs> she'll, right, probably, she'll probably get her yeah. crowning moment at WrestleMania, I think. All right, I hope all my guys have a good year as well. No injuries. I pray to God, no injuries. I hope Paige comes back. That's another prediction. I, I think it's going to be bigger for Baron Corbin, too. Yeah. So, you know, I, and I hope your guys, I hope all your people. You I don't really have any you guys any yeah. left anymore. I got mm-hmm. girls. That's about it. And then, well, maybe we, I, I predict Corporate Cappy has a number one male wrestler. By the end of 2017. <laughs> Hopefully. Del Rio coming back? <laughs> no, maybe. No. Who knows? But, but I, I think that's all That's all for my predictions. I don't think you have any small ones. To think of. I can't think of any on the top of my head. But uh, Sasha those. heel turn. Oh. That, that's she, good that needs you know to ha- It needs to happen. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. All right, and that, guys. That is going to wrap it up for the year in review 2016 for no holds barred wrestling podcast we're your canadian based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses about the wwe and no holds barred on anything we say pun intended be sure to check out the lowdown show brand wars every week which is returning next week where we discuss and review monday night raw and tuesday night smackdown from the past week as well as the sunday night heat where every sunday or not every sunday but some sundays myself kyle masters rants and discusses trending topics in the wwe Remember, you can follow the podcast on Twitter and join on the conversation by tweeting at no holds barred WP, as well as you can follow and listen to all previous episodes of the podcast on Spreaker, 
YouTube and Pod Bean. <laughs> Said it right this time, guys. No Dana Bosch. Bean. I'm Dana Bosch this one. As always, I'm your self proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And I continue to be joined by my co host, the boss, the blissful boss, sorry, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Yep. See you next time. Stack your blue eyes.